Ancient Egyptians carved this massive obelisk from a single stone. Today, only a few obelisks remain balanced on their original stands with no support other than their own enormous weight. How did the Egyptians raise these statues, some weighing up to 500 tons, without breaking them? A team of experts has come to Egypt to try to solve the mystery. This groove is one of the only direct pieces of evidence we have as to how they actually erected the obelisk. Every pedestal has a deep groove carved in one side. Without this groove, the obelisk might slide across its base, but the groove acts as a brake, and it helps keep the obelisk from slipping while it's pulled to a standing position. The challenge is getting one edge of an obelisk lowered safely into the turning groove. Mark Whitby is a British engineer. He has devised a way to lower this 30-ton obelisk into its turning groove 12 feet below. Our goal with this method is to get the obelisk into as steep an angle as possible. You know, as an engineer, it means we've actually planned the process. We've done lots of calculations. We've calculated dimensions, we've calculated weights, we're calculating how the weights move as the, as the obelisk rotates. As the ropes are pulled, a large log secured below the obelisk is supposed to rotate right up to the edge of the platform, ensuring that the obelisk is lowered precisely into the turning groove on the pedestal below. But as the obelisk is pulled forward, it jerks dangerously and creates a problem that Mark did not anticipate. The giant log has slipped closer to the edge than it was designed to go. What's happened is actually the, the log, as, it, as they pull, has, has walked forward. The design is on the basis that as it rotates, it actually comes to an edge. We're now so near the edge that as it rotates, it may come off the edge. And that's not nice. With the log so close to the edge, it is possible that the whole obelisk will come crashing down. Mark decides that the situation is too dangerous to continue. Well, right now I feel gutted personally and from, for the whole team. I think we all made a critical mistake, not just Mark. We wondered what was the most complicated technology they had. Mark has done a lot of calculations, and of course we know that the Egyptians had mathematics, they had fractions, they calculated slopes by rise and run, but they probably didn't use the calculations that Mark has used in order to design this system of raising an obelisk. The Egyptians would have approached it more by experience. 6,000 miles from Egypt at a granite quarry in Massachusetts, American sculptor Rick Brown tries a different method. Okay, let's point this thing to the sky. His design relies on sand, a material the Egyptians had in abundance. The main force at work is gravity. As the sand is cleared away, the obelisk sinks under its own weight. It's big and it's massive, but it's using very simple forces, simply the force of flowing sand. To ensure that it drops down precisely into the turning groove, the obelisk is guided by steps built into the back wall. In addition, brake ropes held back by massive logs are released slowly to exert maximum control as the obelisk sinks towards the turning groove. The obelisk has hit its target, and the walls of the sandbox have now been removed. You can see we have the obelisk in the turning groove. It's at 75 degrees. Most of the hard work's done. But we, remaining is a task that is, uh, could be daunting, and that is we have to uh, now pull the obelisk that last 15 degrees into the 90 degree position. Gently, gently. We have touchdown. We have a freestanding obelisk. Rick Brown's apparently simple method took advantage of gravity and the natural properties of sand. 
you know, the Egyptians were, were learning through keen observation, looking carefully at all the details. They learned how these materials behaved. And, and once they understood that, they used those forces of nature to be able to do something as magnificent as this.